U.S. Elections 2024. In 2016, I was thinking about this today. In 2016, Donald Trump, you know, well, he's, he's worse now. He's, he's deep in dementia and all of that. And it, all of his bad traits are now exaggerated. But he had those traits back in 2016. And people liked him. I mean, they liked the fact that he was vile, that he was hateful, that he rapes women, um, that he is childish and a bully. And for some reason, people liked that about him. Now, that baffled me. I, I could not understand that at all. But people liked it. And I guess back in 2016, even though I thought they were making the wrong choice by choosing Trump, I could kind of understand, you know, from people who were just so frustrated with the whole system that they were willing to burn the country to the ground. And Donald Trump was that person. So it was like, okay, I could, you know, I don't agree with it, but I guess I can understand if you're that frustrated, okay. Donald Trump is still who, who he always has been, but now we know just how bad he is. We know now, we can't deny it anymore. We know that he is a traitor. We know that he wants to destroy the country. We know that he wants to get rid of our democracy. I mean, we know all of that now. And so the fact that even knowing all of that, there are still people who support him, that baffles me. So anybody who still supports him at this point, you know, I always said that people who supported Trump were, were delusional and, and, and blah, blah, blah. And I still believe that, but I believed that they were decent people at heart. And now I'm realizing that they're not. Um, a decent person does not support a rapist and a crook, a convicted criminal. A decent person does not think that a convicted criminal is the best person to, as the oath of office goes, to, you know, uphold the laws of the country and to, you know, enforce the Constitution. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. So anyway, now I just have derision for those people as opposed to pity. Republicans, some of them, are uh, having more freedom to express themselves and say, you know what? I'm going to say this, this, this. I'm going to vote for uh, Kamala Harris in order to save our constitution, our country. So some situation doesn't happen before, eh? I'm, I'm glad they're speaking out. I'm glad we are seeing more and more people speaking out about how bad Trump is. However, I, I don't... I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon that these people are courageous or brave or whatever, because the reality is that they could have and they should have spoken out years ago, but they didn't. And so then the question is, why not? Were you really that big of a coward that you wouldn't speak out well what does that say about these people as people if they are so cowardice if they are so afraid well then why are they in office i mean elected people need to be doing hard things so why wouldn't they do the hard things i mean they've had nine years to do the hard things why just now Probably because, as you said, that Trump actually, the people now, they see that how bad he is. I mean. Yeah, I, I, just, I just feel like these people, you know, why wouldn't they speak out before? Well, they wouldn't speak out before because they were afraid it would hurt their political power. 
They wanted that political power and they thought that at least remaining quiet about Trump, whether they were actively supporting Trump or just remaining quiet about him, was to their political benefit. They thought that at least appearing to be on the Trump train would give them political power, would give them clout within MAGA world. And so they were willing to go along with it. Well, what does that say about their internal compass. If they were willing to sacrifice their morals and everything in order to gain political power, well, that doesn't, I don't know, to me that doesn't speak highly of them. To me, that tells me that they were willing to sell out because they thought that Trump would give them the political power that they craved. And now that they realize that Trump is not able to give them political power. Now they will speak out. To the Democratic National Convention in Chicago uh, Monday. And uh, you think something new will happen over there? How uh, Kamala Harris will keep the enthusiasm into the end of the uh, campaign? Oh, definitely. She's got to keep the energy up. I mean, there's no question there. She's She's got to... You know, I, and, and I mean, I think the whole party wants to keep the energy up. So she only has to, it's 83 more days or something. I, I think she'll be able to. I actually heard something today that they are planning some really cool stuff for the ne Democratic Convention. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that cool stuff is. Uh, but it sounds like they're, they're planning something quite different, which is pretty exciting. Now, everybody are happy just happy enjoy the situation uh, i personally just uh hope that this uh this energy will keep into the end you know and we exactly exactly i think everybody's kind of feeling the same way i mean we have to we've got the energy right now we you know they need to convert that energy into votes i think they're doing the best they can to do that and Hopefully they are successful. Yeah. What is the level of optimism that you have that we're going to win in November? Like yourself. Personally, I am very, 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 very confident that Kamala is going to get the votes. Wow. But then after that, I am very nervous. Um, so she gets the votes. Um, but we, we already know that Trump is trying to steal the election. We know that he's trying to throw chaos into the system. We know that the only way he stays out of jail is if he takes the White House. And that the Republicans, I mean, they cheated in 2020. They, will, they cheated in 2016. They cheated in 2020. They will cheat again. And so that's what I'm concerned about. So I am very confident that Kamala Harris will get the votes, but then I don't know what's going to happen. And it, that, that in, interim part from the election to the inauguration is what scares the pants off of me right now. I, I think what we need to do is we need to win by a margin so big that they can't deny it. You know, Trump lost by 3 million votes in 2016. He lost by 7 million votes in 2020. Uh, we need to we need to win by 15 million, by 20 million. I mean, it's got to be a blowout. And if it's just a blowout, then there's then then they can't deny it. It's just it's going to be it's going to be so much harder for them to deny if if it's just an absolute just blowout. And that's what I that's what I think we need. Okay, Nancy, nice to talk to you again uh, after quite a long time. Like Nancy Sartre Borgel from Avaio. Thank you very much. Thanks, Omar. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.